Hello, everyone, and welcome to our, to our meeting. meeting. We are, we are here, here with, with some agents that want to learn more about hometown lenders programs. And our speaker today is Wendy Fleffler, and she bought her first investment property 20 years ago. So she has some experience in lending and properties and property management. Um, she is the co-author of the book, Bad Enomics, Your Body is Your Business, and You Are the CEO. So she's a published author. This year, she was recruited to become a mortgage loan originator with Hometown Lenders. And Hometown Lenders is the company um, that she has is currently working for, but she's also partnered with companies who have non-QM product lines, like First Guarantee Mortgage Corporation. So we're going to learn a little bit about that as well today. So everyone, please welcome Wendy. Yay! <laughs> Sylvia for inviting me here today. And if you want to go to the next slide, this is a quote from a realtor investor who asked to remain anonymous. And he said, the biggest way to build wealth in this country is to own real estate. How many of you have invested in real estate before? You can raise your hand or put yes in the chat box. How many of you have not invested in real estate? You can either raise your hand or write in the chat box. All right, thank you. And the next, oh, you're good on the slides. For this short presentation, I interviewed three investors. Two of them were realtors. What do you think all three investors had in common? I want to save go to money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, something else as well, though. You can go to the next slide. I'm trying. I'm trying to go to the next slide. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. There we go. All right. They all had goals. May I share your, my goals with you today for today's presentation? Yes. All right. Go to the next slide, please. My goals for today are to inspire you or to at least start you thinking about investing in real estate. Number two, to inform you about the resources available to you and your investors' needs. And number three, for you to text me at the end of this presentation that you would love to send business my way if the opportunity arises. We are having a branch contest right now to connect with realtors and I really wanna win. <laughs> Next slide, please. In today's presentation, I will give you my investor experience and also tell you stories and wisdom from the three investors that I interviewed. Next slide, please. My investor experience started I'd say 20 years ago when I bought my first investment property as an owner occupied three family home. We lived in the lower level suite, also known as a renovated basement for several years. And our goal was to have the renters pay our mortgage so we could live for free and save money. The tenants, they they covered our mortgage and we were able to purchase another home. And then when we sold this property, I moved back to Michigan and I was able to take the proceeds from that property and I bought a house in Muskegon to fix up and rent. Our, our company allows for one to four units for owner occupied. 
we started out with a full doc because we had both had jobs at the time. So we were able to secure the mortgage with the full documentation. But like I said, with the cash out from the sale, I was able to pay cash for a home here in, Mis in Michigan. My partner slash contractor slash now husband, he also out his early inheritance from his parents' property and got cash out and we bought another home in Muskegon and also fixed that up and rented that out. I also was inherited my father's house when he passed away and our renters there we had for 10 years and we never raised their rent because they took such good care of the property. And then two years ago, they had enough cash to buy the house and it was enough to pay off our mortgage. So it's pretty exciting to not have a mortgage to pay anymore. So I am thankful for all those investments. The next slide, please. Investor number one interview. He said he kept his goals simple. Stay healthy, sell 50 houses a year, and buy one house a year. He's one of the realtors. He said selling real estate pays the bills, but investing in real estate builds your wealth. He financed all his properties. One non-QM product he could have used was providing the most recent 24 months of business and or personal bank statements. A non-QM or non-qualified mortgage doesn't conform to the consumer protection provisions of the Dodd-Frank Act. Applicants whose incomes vary from month to month or those who have other unique circumstances may qualify for these types of mortgages. Since he financed all his property, at one time he said he was had a half a million dollars in mortgages. But since he took 15 year notes, he was able to eventually pay off one mortgage a year and he was just celebrating a lot to have each mortgage go away each year. He said now is a golden time for rentals and mortgage opportunities with the rents that are so high and the interest rates so low. He achieved his goal of one house a year. He said start early in the year because some years he was down to October, November and he had to buy a house and the time crunch was on. So he said start that goal early. Well, it's 20 years later, so he has 20 houses and he has semi-retired and now he has started to sell one house a year. This year he sold his first house. He originally bought it for $18,000. He rented it for all those years. And after all those years of renting, he sold it to that renter for $70,000. And since she bought it, the equity has raised for her property for 30,000. It's now a $100,000 value. And so everyone was excited in that transaction. Next slide, please. Investors number two is a husband and wife team and their goal with their home buying was retirement residual income. They started out with their first purchase that they had saved for. So they did pay cash for their first investment home. Their second one and going forward, they financed and either had the renters pay the mortgage each month or they use their equity and did cash out refi to have cash to get that next house. When they were looking for houses to buy, they always looked for 
houses that didn't have structural damage, just cosmetic, whether they could paint, put new carpeting or flooring in, and new appliances. So they were looking for those kinds of properties. And with their numbers, they wanted to make sure they were going to make a profit because they said, if we were just going to make break even on a flip house, I might as well have cocktails with my friends on my porch and not go through all the work of rehabbing a house. They were talking before our interview and they just, they found out they have they have worked on 23 houses together. They currently have nine rentals and they will keep those for the retirement residual income. One of the stories she had told was one of the properties they had bought for $32,000 and she went to walk in the front door and there were leaves everywhere, squirrels nests. And she said, I am not going into that house. Well, there are critters living in there. Mm -hmm. So part of the contingency of the sale of the house is that everything had to be cleared out for her to go in there. They invested $20,000 into that property and added stainless steel appliances and granite countertops. And they were able to sell that property, sell that property for $114,000. They said they made $62,000 in seven months. They just, that property is back on the market right now at $160,000. Some of the tips that they had for investors is when you're fixing up the house, to visit the rehab stores like Habitat for Humanity we have around here, the ReStores and Goodwill, and just look for special deals and secondhand stuff that you can fix up. The renter advice, they said make sure when you have renters that every renter has renter insurance and also garbage service. They had a tenant that didn't have garbage service and when they moved out they had a whole garage full of garbage to rent to renters the the wife said she would always greet she'd always schedule the prospective tenants for one day, one or two days, she'd try to fit it into one day, and she would always greet them outside so she could see what their car looked like. And she wasn't more concerned of the year of the car, she was more concerned about the way they took care of their car, because she said if they're not going to take care of their own position, possessions, I'm sure they're not going to be taking care of my property. And so whoever passed the car test, passed her test and has been shown to be good tenants. Another tip that they said was partner, have an investor partner with somebody that has different skills than you do and to hire a good maintenance person. For her and her husband, he is good at negotiating and all the financial matters, as well as in the middle of a project, he is the person that runs to the lumber store, runs to the paint store, and so production doesn't have to stop. They found their realtor at an open house and connected with, that, with her immediately. They formed a relationship and they told her exactly what their guidelines were. And so when every time a new property came on the, the listings, she knew to call them immediately so they could be one of the first ones there to put in an offer. And like I said before, they were interested in no structural damage and only looking for cosmetics to have that upgrade. And next slide, please. 
Investor number three, a painter by profession and flipped homes in the past and then recently became a realtor so he would be able to get first dibs on the property. This September, he found two duplexes in Muskegon and purchased them for cash and they accepted his offer right away. He invested another $50,000 to fix them up and he increased the value. So now they are worth over $200,000 a piece. And he decided to keep these as rental homes. So now he is currently receiving $3,800 a month from his rentals. His goal is to have an investment system. So every six months, he plans to have a cash out refinance and to be able to buy his next rental home. And he wants to use his rental income to qualify for the refinance. And next slide, please. Mm -hmm. National Real Estate Investors Association. I have visited this website. There is a group in Grand Rapids. I have not joined yet, but if you would like to partner with me, we could join all together. And there is so many resources on this, on this website. They have web trainings and I, it's on my list to connect, and so if you want to partner up and connect together, that would be awesome. You could, there's the link up there if you want to click on that. I don't know if you can through presentation, but it's nationalreia.org. And the next slide, please. I'm working on it. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Ah. I hope these stories. I'm working, I'm working on it, Wendy. Hang on. Oh, there we okay. go. <laughs> okay. Okay. I hope these stories inspired you and gave you some information to help you and your investors. My team is here for you as a resource if you have any questions. And um, please get your phones out now and begin to text to 616 566 1437. And next slide, please. If you or your investors are in need of a mortgage solution, you would love to work with me and my team, please send what I put up there on the, the screen. My name is, put your name, and I'm a realtor with EXP. And I will send business to Wendy if the opportunity arises. And when you are ready, go to the next slide. Thank you. And I am going to dance now because my presentation is over. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was awesome, um, Wendy. And we're gonna we're gonna um, open it for questions. Okay. So does anybody have any questions for Wendy? And really, I am I am inspired, honestly. I, and, and so and so Sierra and Jeff are all like getting ready to text you. So what questions do we have? You can put it in the chat or open up your mics. So I was just curious. You lend to businesses as well, or is it would it just be individuals? For my company, I am on individuals, no LLCs. We do one to four unit properties. Commercial would be a different company. Okay. Any other questions, which, comments? Which I have, I have commercial investor friends. If you are interested in that, I can connect you with them. Okay, good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions, comments? 
I have a quick question. How many years of rental payment history do you need in order to qualify for the cash out refund? Would Raul or? Or Paul. <laughs> or Paul, do you want to answer that question? Sure, no problem. Uh, if everyone can hear me. Um, so with our pro programs, we actually allow first time investors um, to qualify. Um, there may be, depending on the credit profile, additional requirements around that. But ultimately, uh, to ensure these loans perform, we do look for some type of employment history to kind of backfill, even though they're qualifying on cash flow only. So if a customer is going to qualify with cash flow on the investment subject property, if they have another job, uh, we would let them uh, provide employment verification without using their income. Um, if they are someone who has had multiple previous ownership in other real estate, that they can use that to offset the requirement for employment. So more like a hobby or semi-professional investor. Um, so we have a lot of different ways you can approach that situation where, um, you know, if you are a first time investor, you can still get in the door uh, using cash flow to qualify for your first investment property purchase rate. And, you know, uh, obviously not a refinance because you wouldn't own it yet. Um, and then standard seasoning is required as far as, uh, you know, your cash out or rate in terms of what you're used to seeing in the agency space, you know, 12 month seasoning for cash out and things of that nature um, would still be required. Does that help to clarify? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Other questions or comments? Stories. Jokes. <laughs> Jeff, that was Jeff. <laughs> I mean, for, honestly, Wendy, so I, you know, I'll just have a comment that, you know, <laughs> I, the last month or so, you know, I've been looking at some cheap houses that came up in Muskegon and I was really tempted to buy a house for like $10,000, but they, they, um, you know, were more than cosmetic and, and it was, and I don't have any experience with, with anything and not much money beyond 10 grand. So, so I was afraid of doing, doing anything, but, but by just listening to you and, and kind of how well you, you just slowly explained and told the stories, I am inspired. So I want to thank you. And I hope a lot of people see this because I am live streaming and it'll be recorded because it's, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. What popped into my head when you said that, when I was buying houses in Muskegon, I only bought a house that I would live in both structurally and neighborhood wise, because That's good. if something happened in, in my world and I needed a house to live in, and I would want to be safe and happy in the neighborhood. And if it's a house that I would live in, then that would attract tenants that were like me. That's great advice. In relation to that, if I could just add in, just marketability of the property is really um, very important. So that's a really good point because that's a property where you may, after buying, want to take you know um, equity out to buy another investment property. Um, you know, you may find other properties in that neighborhood as well. So it is important definitely to stick with a market where, you know, um, you won't have resistance to finding tenants as well. Um, and then again, the types of tenants, uh, depending on the area or market, uh, can be impacted as well. So I think it all comes down. That's a great point to make, you know, just be careful in the, uh, rental space when you're going out there, you know, looking at the surroundings, you know, um, attracting families, uh, with, you know, good school districts. Um, you know, sometimes in certain areas near military bases, there are good opportunities um, to find, uh, you know, tenants. So those things are, you know, definitely big considerations. That's a great point, Wendy. Yeah, and also just to add a, a counter counter there, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, and we appreciate the fact that Wendy and Sierra have allowed us to participate in this call. Uh, Wendy is, uh, is an excellent client of ours, and we really appreciate the interaction. You know, it's it's funny in this business, uh, there's a lot of people that talk the talk, but 
just from listening to Wendy, she actually has a real world experience and she's in a pretty good situation in terms of being able to help you guys get your loans to the finish line. And uh, we're just glad to be a part of that process. So thanks again, Wendy and Sierra. Thank you. You're welcome. And Sierra's on and she heard you and, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm Sylvia and, and we just, we all, um, appreciate you know paul and raul coming in and, and just, it just it gives me confidence to to work with all of you and also to um you know kind of dabble in this myself honestly so thank you you're very welcome, you're welcome. yeah uh, our our company with non-qm especially but across the board really prides itself in offering our partners um who originate these loans the support um, behind the scenes, you know, there's no question that we can't answer. Um, we don't know the answer. We always know where to find it. And, you know, our, our company itself is backed by a large buyer of non-QM loans. So we, we understand where that market's going um, across the investor space, um, the primary residence uh, purchase space that's going to probably pick up next year. We really try to keep our ear to the ground, um, not only to help our partners, but just to ensure the products we are offering are um, things that will uh, remain durable throughout the uh, the next few years. You know, we don't want to uh, contribute to another uh, crisis in the housing industry. And, um, you know, we want to put borrowers into successful positions, whether they're buying a primary residence, a second home, or an investment property with cash flow. So that's really, you know, really important when you look at some of these products that are off the proverbial beaten path of what we're used to with traditional financing, to still know that the partners you work with that use these products and work with people such as Wendy, have the um, right resources, uh, financial backing, and, and stability uh, as an organization. We've been around as a company over 30 years. So um, I think that kind of speaks volumes about how we're um, positioning ourselves and helping uh, people like Wendy. So I just want to add that, you know, she's got all the horsepower behind us through FGMC. Thank you. That's fantastic. All right. Any other final questions, comments, anything that surprised you? from um, you know, listening to, to Wendy and to, to Paul and Raul or anything that uh, sparked interest? No, we're good? Thank you. We thank you um, all for joining us today. And, um, and that wraps it up. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll just um, be following up with you, Wendy. And I, and I hope everybody does reach out to her just to get the conversation started at least. And um, thanks again. Thank you. Great call. Thanks, guys.